iNav 4.1 has just been released and its two main new features are HD0 OSD canvas mode support and an improved matrix filter that now tracks three gyro noise peaks instead of just one. So by my reckoning, that's nine filters in all, three for each of roll, pitch and yaw. There's some other changes to air mode and return to home sanity checking and I'll leave a link in the description so you can check those out yourself. But I really want to see how the new filtering works. I recently tuned this AOS 7 so it's fresh in my mind and I've always been impressed with the approach that iNav has taken to filtering. And for my style of flying, my quads just fly better and more smoothly with iNav than Betaflight, particularly on seven inches. And in theory, with these new filters, the D-term can be pushed higher without frying your motors or ESCs. So I want to see how much further I can push them. Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Black channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. Since 4.1 has the same major version number as I've got installed on here, this is 4.0, I can just do a diff all and save my current settings, flash a new 4.1 version and then just restore the old ones. And iNav have adopted Semver or semantic versioning which has been explained by Pavel in his own inimitable style. And I'll leave a link below for you to have a look at. Basically, this means if the major version number changes, it breaks compatibility. I'm upgrading from 4.0 to 4.1, so this is a compatible upgrade that I can use the existing settings for. Before we do an upgrade to 4.1, Raging Sparrow, great name. Let's have a quick check on the upgrade procedure. We're going from iNav 4.0 to 4.1. So we use configurator 4.0 to make a diff of the current configuration. Store the diff output, download the new configurator 4.1 and flash the firmware with full chip arrays and connect with iNav configurator and restore the diff. So let's get iNav configurator 4.0 fired up. And yeah, it's warning me there is a new version. We're on 4.0, so we'll carry on using this one because otherwise we're going to get an incompatibility. Let's close that. Connect to the quad. And yeah, we're on 4.1. Let me just quickly check. This is my settings. Yeah, that's great. So if we go to the CLI and type in diff. And now we can save that to a file. And I will call this iNav 4.0 pre 4.1 upgrade. Okay. Excellent. So I can exit out of this now. So now we can quit iNav configurator 4.0. And if you go to the releases page for the configurator 4.1, it gives you the same upgrade instructions. Releases are here. I'm on Mac, so I shall download that and unzip it. Okay, so if we run this, this is a known problem on a Mac. It's very simple to get around. It thinks it's not coming from a signed developer, so we just cancel that go into system preferences security and privacy general and we just say open anyway open and that should bring up a new version okay so I'm going to just recycle the quad there we go right let's go to the firmware flasher so we choose a board and I am using the iFlight F7 Twin G and I want to upgrade this to 4.1.0. Download the software. There we go. No reboot sequence, full chip arrays, that's the important thing. Flash the firmware. Here we go, it's erasing. And just sit back and have a cup of tea. 
Hmm. Great. Finished. Okay, let's connect to the quad. And it's a fresh install, so it's going through the default values. We can just select anything, but I'll just click this guy here. We can restore everything from that default file in a second. So it doesn't really matter what we do at this stage. Okay, down to the CLI. And we're going to go load from file. The INA 4.0 pre 4.1 upgrade. Okay. Execute. Fantastic. So we are on 4.1, configurator is 4.1, and I restored all my settings. Let's just check that is working. Great. Pid tuning, has it remembered my settings? Yes, that looks very good. Those were where I bumped my D's up to and my P's. And part of the testing I'm going to do after this is to see how high I can push those D's. Rates and Expo, as I left them. Filters, yep. So this was my, I think the default for that is 110 hertz. But 95 seems to work pretty well on here. Okay, so that is all looking good. Just check I've got the OSD correct. Yep, exactly as I left it. Fantastic. So that's all done and I'm going to get out and have a play provided the storm has gone. Storm Dudley and Unis are raging here in the UK, so I've resorted to some basement tuning using the Blackbox Explorer and PID Toolbox to see if pushing the D-term introduced any nasty behaviour. I bumped the D-term up five points on each of roll and pitch, and it all seemed fine. No hot or growling motors. I didn't really want to push it any further indoors, to be honest, but there was suddenly a break in the weather. Now it doesn't look it, but the wind out here is pretty bad and Storm Dudley is about to hit, so I needed to be quick. Prop wash handling is remarkable considering this is a one kilogram drone. Just doing a combination of roll, pitch and your moves to get some black box data and it's all feeling pretty good. Yeah, this is pretty good and the response is nice. This ended up being about six and a half minute flight and after I got back and ran the logs, the noise on roll, pitch and yaw is practically nothing and the motors were just slightly warm after the flight. So here's where I ended up. D-term is up to 38 and 40 for pitch and roll and P is at 48 and 52. After my basement tuning, I left the main gyro cutoff frequency at 95 Hz where it was before and dialed the matrix filter min frequency down to 90. Well, there's a really noticeable difference with the INAV 4.1 additional filtering on this quad. There's some more tuning to do on this, now I know exactly how far I can push the D-terms, which I suspect is a little bit further, but I'm probably going to back it off just a little bit to be cautious. There's some pitch bobbling on the throttle steps, the beep beep beep, but not that much. It does need sorting, I think it's probably the anti-gravity settings. And try as I might, it was impossible for me to get any prop wash with these settings on here. There doesn't seem to be any significant noise on the spectrum display and the motors are running just barely warm. But remember this AOS 7 is a very low resonance quad and these Emax Eco 2 motors they're just spectacular right through the power range. They're very very smooth. I don't want this for aggressive freestyle but it's surprisingly agile for a one kilogram quad. And the flight times with some reasonably hard acro gives well over six minutes using these dual GMB 1250 milliampere hour LiPos. 
but I really want to try this for some long range using my Sony VTC6 lithium iron packs that I made. And while the storms are keeping me indoors, there's no excuse to upgrade my other iNav quads to 4.1. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that helpful, why not buy me a coffee to support the channel? There's links in the description. I'll see you next time.